Hello, I'm Gary Miyakawa, and I'm a diver. What I wanted to talk a little bit today about is flotation. Uh, foam products that we can add to make things lighter underwater. It may not help much above water, but it will certainly help underwater. The question has been about uh, taking some weight off some of the dive gear, especially if you carry a big rig with lots of flash and lots of cameras, lots of lens, things like that. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. I'm going to do some cuts and tastes in this video, so you may see some little jagginess there, but uh, please understand I'm trying to do that to save you a little bit of time. I'm going to change the video and let you see. Here's my uh, backscatter mini flash. And one of the things I did immediately with it was try to figure out how to reduce its weight. It's not terribly heavy, but it does weigh probably about six ounces uh, underwater. It'd be nice to take some of that weight away. So what I've done is developed a couple foam pieces here, and they fit right together. And then what I would do to hold them in place is I actually put some heat shrink on there, use a heat gun and shrink it down. And it holds it into place very nicely. Uh, I have it for both the snoot and for the uh, actual um, flash itself or strobe itself. Uh, so I just make it very easy to be able to use these if I want to. Maybe I don't want to, maybe I do. All right, let me show you how this foam actually works. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move everything out of the way and show you the actual foam itself or how I get the foam. So these guys are going to the corner and I'm gonna bring the two containers out that hold the foam. And this is actually two part foam. As you can see, it's from US Composites in West Palm Beach, Florida. It is literally right off of uh, almost Blue Heron Boulevard. So uh, if you're a diver down there, you can go over there and actually pick this stuff up directly from them. Now you can't go in and buy it. It's not like a storefront, but you can certainly order it and go by and pick it up. And that's what we did the last time we were there. So you have part A, which is a urethane pour foam, part A. And then you also have a urethane foam part B, and you notice it says eight pound. I'm not quite sure where the math comes from, but it's it's a very rigid foam, as you can hear. It's it's not going to break. And I've had it down to 110 feet and never collapsed or did anything bad. So I feel very confident that it's uh, stable for at least the recreation diver, and that's what we are. So. Now I'm going to take a minute and get set up and let you see how I mix it and how it actually goes together. Okay, so I've adjusted myself here, put things together. What I have done with part A and part B is I've actually put them in squeegee bottles. That makes it a little easier to dispense exactly the amount I want. And it's fairly important to be pretty close uh, when you're measuring these up together. This is a one-to-one -one mixture. So it's not some of the fancy three to one, five to one. It is one to one, one part this to one part this. Now you'll notice I wrote on there pour first. Part B tends to be a little thicker. So I want to pour it into the cup first, let it settle and then turn around and turn and uh, put in part B, I'm sorry, part A. And at that point, the clock is ticking. You have ooh, about three minutes before it's uh, rock solid. So you need to have your mold ready. You need to have everything ready you're going to do right soon as you start mixing it. You don't have time to go fiddling around and finding stuff. Uh, you also want to be careful about mixing too much. You mix too much, you're going to make one heck of a mess, and it's sticky and gooey and nasty. So be careful about that. So now let's look at actually mixing up a batch. We're going to do just a small batch. Uh, I'm going to use my gram scale down here, and you can see... Uh, turn it on, it's set to gram. I'm going to turn around and I know it's not a wet gram. You don't email me and tell me I'm all bad about that. I'm just using this to get the same amount. So I'm going to do about six grams there and plug that guy up. I'm going to take part A and I'm going to add until it comes out to about 12 grams. Boom, 12. I'm going to plug it back up. I'm going to take my trusty dusty uh, um, popsicle stick. I'm going to mix it up. You can see it's nice, pretty uh, beige color. 
it's not terribly impressive. You can, if you have dies, put dies in it. I've done that before. And you go ahead and put the die into the uh, part B, mix it up real good, and then add your part A. Uh, so we're going to sit here and let it go. I'm going to close this guy out. I'm going to put him over there out of the way. And we're going to sit there and watch this guy grow. So as you can see, it's grown quite a bit. It's not quite over the banks of this little cup, little Dixie cup, uh, but it's it's uh, pretty full for the little bit that we put in there. Now, right now, because it has not fully hardened, it's quite warm. I don't know what the temperature is. I'm going to say about 95, something like that. Uh, but you will see that it's already taken pretty, pretty good shape or pretty firmness. Now. It's not rock solid yet, and it will get that way in the next few minutes, okay? So we'll back out a little bit, and we're going to wait a little bit longer before we mess with it. Now, if you touch it right now, it will give a little bit, okay? And so you could press it in and do something if you had to, if you figured out that you had a problem, um, or you wanted to, to change it. But if you do that, it's going to collapse some of the cells, and so you're going to lose a little bit of the buoyancy from it. But you could if you had to. But as you can see, we didn't put very much in the bottom of this little Dixie cup. And we probably put about that much in it. Probably about a quarter of an inch right there. And you can see it's grown that much. So you need to be careful. Don't use something that's very uh, pliable because it will pressurize and go beyond the walls. And that's probably not what you want. Uh, so be careful about that. Uh, can you glue it? Uh, it's typical foam, so you have to use some sort of foam uh, tolerant glue. Typically CA, uh, cyanoacrylic glue, is not foam tolerant and it will literally melt the foam. There are some CAs that are foam tolerant. You can buy them from various uh, uh, places. Uh, local hobby shop would have them certainly um, but you need to practice with it on a spare piece or make a block of this stuff and test with it uh, certainly um, rubber cement will work with this no problem um, it won't attack it and there are other foams uh, probably gorilla glue but I haven't actually tried that now the top of this is pretty hard but the bottom where it's still warm is pretty soft so I'm not going to mess with it anymore. I'm going to let it sit for just a little bit longer and give it another couple minutes and we'll see what we got. As you can see, it's only taken us uh, about 12 minutes to get to this point from the time we started mixing it. Uh, I accelerated some of the, the growing factor so you didn't have to sit there and watch it glow, grow. Uh, but hopefully this will give you a quick idea of how this foam uh, can be mixed up and used. Now, some of the other uh, things that I do with it is I will take and I will actually mold it around an arm, a video arm. And in doing that, now I have my weight of the arm uh, offset considerably by the foam itself. This arm now, this eight inch arm is actually about two ounces positive. Uh, I have uh, more foam, another 8-inch arm, uh, where I actually put 2 inches of foam on it. And this is almost 6 ounces positively buoyant in the water. So I don't have those little squares, which are useful, very easy to put on, take off. Uh, but I don't have the little squares that could slide around. This is pretty permanent. Uh, you can hear they're pretty solid. Uh, now, I would normally before I take this out, I would actually put uh, heat shrink, as I mentioned, on this and kind of clean it up. It makes a nice, pretty surface. Uh, if it's for carry, it gets pink uh, heat shrink, which took me a while to find, but uh, she always gets pink on everything. So anyway, back to this uh, 
waiting and this guy is just about done the sides have gotten pretty solid um, I'm gonna wait just another minute or two more and eh, I may not wait maybe I'll just jump in there and you can see it's kind of like peeling off a now, if this were a really shiny uh, piece of uh, stuff, not paper or cup, um, i tell you what I use. Uh, there are a number of things I use for molds. Anything that's the right size, I will use for a mold, okay? Uh, sometimes I'll even use a Coke can. Cut the lid off, be very careful, it gets sharp, and uh, use that as a mold. A lot of times I'll also use pill bottles. They are shiny on the inside, and usually this material does not stick to them. So you could turn around and actually uh, slide it out and make a true mold. I use PVC. That's what mold is for these. It's actually a piece of PVC split in half. You can see the split line. Wait, no, you can't. It's too bright. Let's see if we turn off that light and see if that gets better. Yeah, you can see the, the mold line right there. And I will actually mold this using PVC. So, so anyway, that's uh, eight pound foam and how I use it. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, the people at uh, US Composites are really good about getting it to you. If you're not within the US, I doubt seriously that they can ship it internationally. Uh, it's a caustic agent and it, you know, I doubt they allow you to do that uh, or allow them to do it. At least it'd probably be cost prohibitive. But I'm certain somewhere in your, your uh, neighborhood, you can probably find it. Uh, check with the, some of the boat companies. Uh, they oftentimes use it for flotation, embedded flotation. You may be able to get it from them. So, or find out where they get it from and get some from that distributor. So as you can see, we've made a really nasty ice cream cup here. I don't think I want to eat this one, but uh, it's a popsicle. Anyway, hope you have a great day. Thanks for spending a little time with me. More craziness that I do. Uh, some more of the do-it-yourself stuff. If you like this, uh, there'll be more of these. And please feel free to subscribe and like it. And tell your friends. We're going to have some fun over here on this channel. Anyway, have a great day. And always remember, it's dive, dive, dive time somewhere.